Well, we know there have been um, fMRIs of the brain for years, um, and we've attempted as educators to understand and see what we could use in our classrooms. For years, we've done what we think we know is the best thing to do. We use our intuition and the art and craft of teaching, and when we find success, we build on that. Um, but it's been kind of almost like a fingers crossed approach, like I hope this works with this child or I hope this works with this group of students. But understanding exactly how the brain works and how we can be brain changers, how we can influence what happens um, for our learners is really exciting and totally different than what we've done in the past. Well, our, head, our headmaster, Nancy Mugel, totally enthralled by the possibility of what we could achieve if we truly understood that we are brain changers, that we don't just get what we get with the students in our classroom. And so she reached out to the Center for Transformative Teaching and Learning and applied for a partnership. And we were lucky to be one of just seven schools in the country to partner with them and to be involved in the research that they're doing and implementing it with our students in our classrooms. It is. It is a three-year commitment, which is another um, hallmark of really good professional development. Um, in the past, um, educators have been guilty of um, kind of one-shot deals, you know, we're going to give you a one-day training, now go change the world, and that doesn't work. So this is embedded and sustained. So as we learn more things about executive functioning of the brain, about inner spacing, and practices that maybe we hadn't done in the past, we can start to incorporate those right away in our classrooms. And some examples of that are um, being better note takers and teaching children to take notes in novel ways because that increases the executive functioning of the brain. Just well, in class, sometimes we'll take notes, and like the beginning of the year, we did uh, fractions, how to convert fractions to decimals, and then fractions to percent, and so on and so forth. Also, um, things like giving students more choice integrating subjects for them instead of expecting them to do that on their own, um, flexible seating, um, different ways to show what you know are all practices that we can enhance or begin to incorporate right away. At the end of three years, I think what we want to make sure um, that we have established here at Kent School is the, the power of yet. I don't know this yet, but I will. Um, in the past, maybe we've thought about right brain and left brain learners, and I'm a good math person because I've got it in my genes and I'm not a good math person. All of that is not really valid with what we know today. So to increase the power of yet to have a growth mindset and to make sure that our students reach their highest potential. Many schools only have a one day professional development opportunity, and so they can't make a commitment like this. Um, with us being a smaller school, it's easier for us to go all in and make sure that everybody has the buy-in, um, that all kids can benefit, rather than saying, oh, we're gonna try this with this group of students or with this grade level. We just said, we're doing it pre-K to eight, and our teachers- I can feel the energy already. When, when you know better, you do better, and our, our teachers are so excited, and our kids are picking up on these practices. This is gonna change their lives. It's gonna change the teaching that happens at Kent School forever. And it's going to truly change these students as learners, not only the perceived learners that they are, but the um, goals that they can accomplish. So if we have a problem where we have to convert a fraction to a decimal, we would look at this and see the proper method to do it.